Fortunately, over the last five years, we've been dealing with uh, undue creativity and uh, onboarding on illegality, and we're having to deal with the hangover from it. In the same sense, uh, we've had a situation where we've had uh, creativity in, uh, in patent trolls and in large strategics who are looking to utilize a court that was never intended for these kind of cases with the International Trade Commission's court where they are only, uh, if, they find, if they find infringement, the only thing they can do is issue an injunction. They don't have the ability to apply appropriate remedies. And as a result, you have trolls that don't have standing to get an injunction in the district court utilizing these other, this ITC court, and we've got dozens of cases that are actually being brought by trolls, and companies like Microsoft and Apple are also using it as a complement to their district court cases to apply pressure, because in that situation, when you're facing with the potential loss of access to the U.S. market, you will sign a royalty agreement that is not market uh, because it's not about the it's not, licensing and, and litigation is not about necessarily the nature of the patents that are being asserted and litigated. That's part of it, but you have to think about the context. Ownership by, by the ca most cash-rich companies in the world of patents that, are, that could also be held by a, a small, medium-sized enterprise places those patents in a very different position and a much more dangerous position for open source and for the Linux community. Okay, perhaps uh, it seems to me there's a, a common theme here. We've been talking about the successes in the world of openness, but they are being overshadowed by larger changes, particularly of legal systems that just can't cope with the modern world in terms of the sharing that's going on and the way that those systems are abused. Um, I wonder if anyone's got any questions at this point about some of those issues that have been raised? Yep. Can we have a microphone, please? <laughs> Thanks very much, yeah, gentlemen. There. Uh, so, so one uh, one comment and one question. Um, to Simon's point at the beginning, the question. Uh, why so much bad law so recently, or some, why so much bad regulation so recently? Um, one, ang I mean, you mentioned the fact that the internet is profoundly changing the relationship between cre cre creator and consumer. It's also profoundly changing and going to change much more the relationship between citizen and government. And uh, I think that one of the things that's happened in the last two years is that government has woken up to that fact, and so we're no longer just dealing with corporate lobbying, we're also re dealing with governments who are recognizing that their interests are profoundly challenged, and but for example, by looking at what's going, what went on in the Arab Spring in early 2011, um, and looking at how networks of loosely organized people can achieve profound change regardless of whether the government is involved or not, and I don't think that that's a coincidence. Um, and my, my question, which is, to, which is more to Keith, is uh, your analysis seems um, uh, you know, very insightful. Do you have any proposals for remedies to, to this situation? Thanks very much. Keith? Uh, regarding the ITC, we've actually been actively lobbying over the last 12 months. Um, there's, I don't know how much detail people want to get into, but I'll try and keep it at a high level. The, the 1934 Act for the ITC actually created a provision mm -hmm. whereby um, products that were created that uniquely enable um, in, innovation and enable economic benefit for the national economy, that those should be kept out of ITC's uh, essentially hammer, and so that you wouldn't you wouldn't adjudicate a case there, or even if you did find infringement, you would kick it back out to the district court for ultimate application of a remedy because the economic detriment to the U.S. and its competitive position would be such that uh, you wouldn't, uh, because of the public interest being served, you wouldn't allow for an injunction to issue. We are claiming, and we've had papers prepared by economists at, at, uh, at Oxford as well as by legal scholars in the U.S., uh, to talk about how the public interest should be invoked in situations where Linux and open source based products are the subject of a, a, a litigation in the ITC. In this way, we remove one of the arrows from the quiver of large strategics and of trolls that are attempting to sue based on Linux to be able to slow or stall Linux. I mean, understanding the context of this is very important. This is 
we were going to have multiple platforms, and I should mention that uh, hearing Mitchell's comments earlier about a new OS coming out, which is a far more open OS coming out from, uh, from Mozilla, is incredibly encouraging because we like to, we wanted to see web OS get, get traction in the market. We wanted to see uh, Tizen get traction in the market, but it seems like it's somewhat stalled. We wanted to see uh, the platform that uh, the Migo platform, which essentially was bought out by uh, by uh, Microsoft when they made an investment in uh, uh, in having Nokia essentially exclusively use their platform, these were other platforms that, for one reason or another, have not caught caught hold in the marketplace. So it's a one front war. It's a lot. It's a lot easier when you're in the game of working potentially collaboratively with other large strategics to be able to layer on total cost of ownership to get to the point where it's uneconomic to utilize the only mobile Linux platform out there. And so we're looking at the effect. It's, it's not that, Andro that Android represents Linux per se. It represents a, a, a utilization of the Linux kernel, but there's lots in there. If you look at the stack, the Linux kernel is way down there, and what's, what people are suing on is way high in the stack. So it's really not Linux, but it, insofar as they're eliminating a Linux product from the market, it's concerning to us. Okay, thanks very much. I'd also like to turn your comment into a question for the panel. Do you agree that you know, the governments of the world have woken up and, and are now the enemy? Hmm. So I, I, listening to your, your comment there, I, 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 I've been very pleased over the last year the degree to which, for example, the UK government has sought comment on new legislation, or at least parts of the government. There's, there's people from UKG in the audience who've done a fine job in that regard. Nonetheless, when I see new legislation starting out, starting out in, in the UK Parliament, it seems to me the only voices that have been incorporated into it have been the voices of corporate lobbyists. And it seems to me that the role of government in preparing that legislation has been to crystallize the consensus of corporate voices without considering the needs of citizens who are both creators and consumers. So while I agree with you that, there is, that it's started, I still feel there's no one in government speaking for me. And the difficulty that produces is that when we're talking about European legislation, I, I can't afford to come here to join in a think tank that's happening in the parliament building or that's happening in some other city in Europe. Th th there are people in this audience who are paid to travel all over Europe, stay in hotels and sit in committee meetings. I, I know, because I used to be one of them. But uh, the, the citizen creator consumer is not in a position to come and participate semi full time to full time in consultative activity. And mechanisms for citizen feedback that rely on being able to understand. There was a questionnaire about um, a bill in the UK Parliament recently that was about 26 detailed fuzzy questions that required an essay answer that would have made a thesis for a doctorate look moderate. Uh, and now it was you know, good, it was, cons it was consulting the citizen. Bad, no citizen was in a position to respond to the consultation. And so you're doing a good job to open up, but it's just not working because the only people who can really participate are the paid lobbyists who are already perfectly well represented in the legislation. Thank you. Well, I can, I can uh, see that you are suffering from consumer blues, which is uh, being always in the minority in the corner uh, and uh, uh, never having your voice heard as consumer lobbyist. This is something that is uh, always happening. Uh, it's interesting that now with the openness theme, uh, the, uh, as you call it, the enemy maybe might be changing for us. In the past, uh, it was the big corporations. Now maybe it's going to change or maybe the... Um, the people suffering from the consumer blows are different than in the past. Maybe we are going to get it all at the end of the day. I don't know. Uh, but uh, what is interesting for me is that uh, you said that this issue about the um, um, consulting, the consultation, the fact that uh, now the process is open, at least at the European level, there is more and more the use of the online tools to make uh, um, the people uh, participating, but it is true that it is a double edge or double kind of uh, um, meaning uh, because the, the tool might be open, but the questions themselves are very, very difficult to understand, and ourselves as the organized consumers. Sometimes we have a difficulty because the question is asked to an individual, so you are asked to sometimes really uh, answer yes or no as an individual person, and it is difficult to represent the collective point of view. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, sometimes the question is really a PhD kind of question. So it is really um, sometimes more the uh, form than the substance behind 
order. And therefore, there is a... a um, there is an open process, but is the result really incorporating the uh, openness element? I'm really not sure. But again, I can say that uh, uh, you can live with consumer blues. Some people like it as well. Uh, and, uh, um, and it is really great now that uh, uh, more and more people are um, trying to um, influence the process of uh, regulation as well. well. Two very quick remarks. First, uh, what we've seen recently is public outrage of people very, very uh, unexpectedly came forward and protested against pieces of legislation that, frankly, I, I wouldn't have hoped uh, people could care. But we cannot rely on outrage because at, at some point that there will be, uh, people will be resilient and, and not very yeah. so saturated to, for, for, for this. You cannot always call danger, 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 uh, for the seventh, eighth, tenth time, people will not respond. So it's, uh, and, and, uh, those people pushing for, for this kind of formation have uh, uh, infinite patience and infinite uh, uh, means to, to push it. Um, the second thing is uh, this outrage was uh, somewhat solicited or uh, uh, enhanced by some intermediaries. Uh, some people uh, hosting, content hosting services, providing uh, uh, the flow of, of information. Um, those, uh, those companies or those service providers are constantly attacked by attempts to reform uh, um, under two main headlines. First is, well, protecting children, and second is uh, piracy uh, or protection of the content. So um, I see a parallel between those people, uh, Google and others and Wikipedia, uh, soliciting outrage and uh, being attacked on, 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 on and, and uh, uh, having a force to be those people held liable for what flows into, into the pipes. Um, okay. Any other questions arising? Gentlemen over there, please. <clears throat> My name is Holger Böken from Germany. I was wondering on a, on a more local level with uh, far more global effects, uh, whether 2012 is actually the end of the year of openness. Um, the smartphoneification of desktops and notebooks also known as Windows Secure Boot, where we keep losing control over the computers and what's going on on these machines on, on our desktops, in our private living rooms and offices. Um, do you have any opinion?